God's Two Cents, God's Church of Love Online, and God has some beautiful, positive words to share with his body. He wants to lift your spirits, you guys. He wants to hold. He, he's the lifter up of our heads, and he's going to do some head lifting today. Amen? All right. So let's get to the word. Psalms 115. And we are going to start with verse 9. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. Mm, he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that Fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Mm, mm, mm. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence, but we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. God knows. I felt this when I was going through these scriptures and God was, all of these were coming to me. And what God was letting me know is it's time to comfort his people and be the lifter up of their head. God knows what some of you are nervous about. He knows what's been weighing down on your mind. He knows what your emotions have been going through the topsy turvy. Every time you turn on the internet, you turn on your TV, you watch the news, bad news, bad news, bad news, question marks, question marks, question marks, what, 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 when, 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 how, 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 oh no, what is happening? What's it all about, Alfie? And we find ourselves in this question mark of a quandary. We don't know what's going on. And it's scary. As much as we keep our minds stayed on God and he keeps us in perfect peace, we have those moments where we are feeling the eruption. We have those moments where we feel like there's a blackout in our spirit. And God knows what we're feeling. He knows what we think. Before it registers to us, he already got the memo. He's got the memo, y'all. So know that God understands what's going on inside of you. Remember that. <sighs> I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Remember that. I'm, I'm not trying to sing y'all every time I say something. He pops something in my head, so I have to go with it. Because I don't know which one of you needs to hear this or that. And that's the reason I just, I break in with a little piece of a song here, a little piece of a song there. Because while I'm talking, God's popping them in my head. What I want you to know is that God knows exactly where you are. He knows where your level is, where your level of anxiety is, where your level of peace is. He knows what you need to hear. And he wants you to know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Remember that. He's not going to leave us in a lurch. He's not going to abandon you. He has not forgotten about you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He cares for you, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. Remember, 
He is right there alongside. He's right in you. He's with you no matter what. Emmanuel, God with us. All right. Isaiah chapter 41. I don't know who you are on YouTube or God's Church of Love. But somebody needs to have their spirits lifted big time. And listen, there are times when we go through seasons, just like the land goes through seasons of drought. There are times some of you are feeling a spiritual drought. You, you, you feel like the power's out. Somebody turned off the power. You have no power. You have no refreshing. So there's no living water flooding your soul. It feels like that. It does. But God lets you know that no matter what, he's got your answer. Going to verse 8, this is Isaiah 41. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Check that out. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. Let me stop there and let's stick in Pat's two cents right there, right after the colon. A lot of times we're dismayed. Oh, did you hear about that? Oh, no. Did you? Oh, my goodness. I don't know what to go. Oh, my God. Well, Lord, what's going to happen if they don't have this and they don't have that? What am I going to do, Lord? What are you going to do? And we find ourselves being dismayed. Focus on glory, baby. All your answers are in glory, not on that too. Focus. Some of you need to change your focus. And listen to what he says, continuing on from there. Mm, mm, mm. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Don't worry about the folks that come up against you. Don't worry about the leaders of the nations that seem to want to penalize and and punish those that don't want to line up with their little agendas and their little programs and propagandas. Don't worry about that. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught, zero baby, non-existent. For I, the Lord thy God, will, not might. For I, the Lord thy God, will. Let me say that one more time so you get it in that nugget of yours. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. Why? I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will Help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, and Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new th sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. 
I will open rivers. This is my favorite part right here. I will open rivers in high deserts and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness, uh, uh, the wilderness now, the wilderness, that's like desert. The wilderness, a pool of water and the dry land, springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah tree, and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Listen, you guys, pants two cents. Listen, listen, listen. You serve a risen Savior. You serve a God who is very much alive, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-able. He is, he is able to do whatever he chooses to do. You will never do without. You will never go hungry, not in God's hands, not in God's watch. He's watching over you. He's watching over me. We don't have to wonder, well, what if they don't have this? And what happens with the food shortage? And, you know, the shipments, they're being blocked. And they're having problems getting things in and getting things out. And, Lord, what if the collapse happens? What if we have a total world blackout? What if we have, Don't you know God will shed his light in your darkness? God will feed the hungry if he tells you to feed the hungry. Don't you know he will feed his own when we get hungry? Huh, and we don't have to be hungry four or five days in a row. He will feed us. Soon as that belly gets to rumbling. Ah, that's my baby's belly button. Let me feed my babies. Don't think that God is impotent. Don't think he's not able to rise to the occasion you get the drift. Don't think he's not able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. I don't know how many times I got to quote that scripture before you really get it. Because if we really get it, none of us would ever worry. But we all do, don't we? We all are guilty of those moments of fear, those moments of trepidation, those moments of what ifs. And allowing ourselves to go down that downward spiral emotionally and psychologically. No, don't allow that. Shut the devil up. Shut yourself up. And encourage yourself in the Lord. Because God is well able to do exceedingly, here we go again, abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. So do we have power that works in us? If you're not sure, ask for the power. Whatever you need, God will give it to you. If it's power, if it's faith, you hear what I'm saying? If it's understanding, if it's peace that passes all understanding, if it's authority, Whatever it is, if it's understanding what God's word is saying to you personally, whatever it is, guidance, instruction, warning, divine protection, divine provision, whatever it is, God is well able to do it, baby. And he's more than willing. He's not thinking to himself, oh, Lord, not them again. Every time I look around, they need something. That's not God. Because that's not love. And God is love. God does not contradict himself. Remember that one too. All right. Wow. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. This is a little story I want to tell you. Starting at verse 23. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the door point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her. Lay thy, excuse me, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him 
And much people followed him and thronged him. Now let's go on down. Let's fast forward because we're telling this story right now. All right. 35, as he was speaking to someone who got healed. Verse 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. I hope you just internalize what he just said. And he suffered no man, that means he allowed no man to follow him, save, which means except Peter and John, Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that someone should give her to eat. Listen, listen, listen. I don't care if your situation looks dead and hopeless. I say unto thee, arise. Fear not, only believe. And God will come through for you. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. Is there anything too hard for him? Uh-uh. He is God, the mighty one, speaks the word and it gets done. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I dare say no. What do you say? Remember, no matter what's going on, no matter what's rumbling, no matter what's erupting, no matter what's collapsing, no matter what's blacking out around you, no matter how many power surges or power failures, no matter how many food shortages or water shortages, no matter if you got toilet paper shortage, God will make a way where there is no way. He said himself, he'll, he'll make rivers in the desert. See, he can make something out of nothing. Remember the scripture in Genesis at the beginning where he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he goes on to say, and the earth was without form. That means it didn't have a shape to it. It wasn't round. It wasn't solid. It was nothingness but darkness. The earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be. Isn't that something? What did he say? Let there be what? Light. First thing he shed in the darkness was light. See, when you are going through dark periods in your life, the first thing you need is for God to, to flip that switch and turn the light on so you can see what's going on. Because now you need understanding, you need to learn, you need to get your bearings. Let God shed his light on your darkness and you won't be in the dark, but you will not grope in the dark like a blind man. You won't. You will know what's going on. And you will know as you follow on to know. The more you follow, the more you will know. God will teach you. He will instruct you. He will make you wise. He will make you strong. He will sustain you. He will gird you with his strength. Fear not. 
Whatever you're going through now, baby, it's preparation for that final curtain when Jesus busts through those clouds. Where will you be when he comes? What will you be doing? <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> Putting up hissy fits, having fights with people because they said you can't. And you know that God said you can. And you fighting with them over what God said? Ain't no need to fight, baby. Yeah, okay, I'll catch you later. Okay, Lord, tell me what I can do. I mean, settle it in your spirit that God is in control of your life. Amen? Don't, don't, don't get caught up in the frenzy of the storm. Don't go out in the storm without your raincoat and your, your, your galoshes and your, and your umbrella. No, you cover yourself in the garment of praise. You cover yourself in the blood of Christ. You engulf yourself in the word of God. You will be all right. You will. Because God knows how to take care of what belongs to him. Amen. And those of you who don't know Christ yet, if you would make a point, make a diligent point of being merciful at every turn, even if you don't know him, ask him to help you forgive those that you can't forgive, those that you don't want to forgive. And you exercise that one little measly thing, God will give you his mercy. He will extend more mercy on you the more you extend mercy on others. Because he said, to the merciful, I will show myself merciful. Yes, he does. But he also says, to the froward, I will show myself froward. And he says in the New Testament, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain, that means get, mercy. So now I ask you, for those of you who want to give your heart to the Lord, I'm going to open up the mics and I'm going to have Lynette speak over you real quick because many of you need to give your heart to the Lord and you're hesitant, but you feel the butterflies fluttering around in your stomach because there's a war going on. That's a spiritual war making you doubt, making you fear, making you think that you can't do it. No, you can't. I answer it for you. No, you can't. But the Holy Ghost that comes in you and always ask God to fill you with his Holy Ghost on a daily basis. That's where your power comes to obey God and do things his way, to even want to do things his way when it's diametrically opposed to the way you know how to do stuff. All right. I'm going to open up the mics and I hope and pray that those of you who needed this word are going to take heed and I hope that you cry out to God. I hope you seek him. I hope you, you, you rearrange your thinking by flooding your mind with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged. You are not forsaken. God knows your name. All right. Let me open up the mics here. All right, Lynette. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Right now, I would just like to invite anybody who is listening, the sound of my voice, you want to give your heart to the Lord Jesus. There's no fancy prayers. There's no ritual. It's just simply a saying, Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, you're a whosoever, anybody, I don't care what you've done, I don't care what you feel, God said, come, come as you are. Come, come as you are. So all you need to do is just right now just say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you came here to this earth, you died on the cross, you were, you rose from the dead three days later, 
and now you sit at the right hand of the Lord, of, of the Father, and I believe that you are coming back again, and I want to be with you, Jesus. So right now, come into my life, take over, take over everything in my life, Lord. I'm scared, I'm afraid that all this stuff is going on, Lord. You know what I'm going through, and I have turned everything, Lord. So Jesus. I'm surrendering myself to you right now, to you, Jesus, and I need you. He will come in. He guarantees it in his word. He will in no wise cast out anybody who calls on his name. He said, I will not cast you out. As a matter of fact, he's standing there right now with his arms open. He's saying, come as you are. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to stop drinking, smoking, whatever you're doing. Come as you are. That's right. Jesus loves you. He loves you. That's right. I hear somebody saying, but I'm I'm smoking weed or I'm I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Jesus said, Come as you are. I love you. He I died for you when you, you're still sinning. I still died for you. That's right. If you didn't know that, he died he died for us. He, he's chosen you. So with all that being said, you know somebody, you got a friend in Jesus, and you didn't even know it. All you have to do is just simply say what I said, that it's done. And welcome to the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you said, Jesus, come in my heart. It's done. It's that simple. Nothing fancy. Right. Nothing spooky. It's that simple. Right. I love you. And have a blessed and wonderful rest of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. And anybody on the line who wants to rededicate, God is extending that too. If you want to rededicate yourself, you've been walking with the Lord for a while and you know that you could be walking a little bit closer. Maybe you don't pray as much as you used to. Maybe there's some things going on and you just don't feel like your relationship is like it. Well, where it used to be right now, the Lord is saying, it's okay. I'm married to the backslider. I've never left you or forsaken you. Come on back home. Jesus is saying, come on back home. I love you. That's it. Amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lynette. And I always want to interject two things when I hear that prayer. Some of you, and it's because of my personal experience, so y'all give me a little leeway on this. Some of you may not quite understand who Jesus really is. Some of you may not quite be totally convinced that he is or that there is a God. But if you're hoping there is, if you're really wanting it to be true take a chance and take the plunge anyway and god will reach further toward you than you could ever reach toward him to help you believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and ask god the second thing lord fill me with your holy spirit because that's the only thing that will change your nature is the power from the holy spirit to enable you to walk this new walk in Christ Jesus. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say on that. Amen. God bless you guys. We're opening up for discussion, unless some of you have to leave. And God bless those of you who have joined us from YouTube. And let me know if you want to. If you don't, God knows. That's all that's important. But it's always good to let someone know in your family, your friends, somebody, that you gave your heart to the Lord. It's something about speaking that out that seals it. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs>